Hey everyone, welcome back to our last tutorial on height map terrains in iClone. In the previous two tutorials, I explained the details of how you can adjust uh, your height map terrains in iClone. In this tutorial, or in this last tutorial rather, I showed you how you can create your very own height map terrain using uh, Earth Sculptor as well as a combination of that and iClone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a number of different uh, effects that you can add to make your uh, scene look pretty cool. Um, so right here we have the uh, the uh, scene from the last tutorial. Uh, we input our little sign here. You can see that. Uh, if I zoom around here, you can see that uh, we have some icy effects on the side of the mountain there. You can see that reflection uh, going along. If we uh, kind of maybe bring the light around, you can see the, the light effects a lot better uh, on that side of the mountain right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of cool atmospheric effects that you can add to your uh, your scene. Uh, so I'm going to go to the stage tab here, and you, we're going to focus on this atmosphere section. So in this atmosphere section, there's a number of uh, different uh, default templates here. And these are basically templates that include everything from image-based lighting um, to HDR lighting. They combine a lot of things, a lot of different lighting together as well. Um, so we're just going to be using these basically for this tutorial. I'm going to be explaining uh, what they consist of. Um, so I'm going to go over here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go to this uh, IBL Blizzard. Um, this is a very suitable uh, template for this scene. You can see now we have a very uh, treacherous looking uh, uh, scene right here. If I, if I zoom out, you can see uh, that we have some fog in effect um, and uh, all that stuff. If I zoom out even further, you can see how the fog is taking effect. If we uh, just go in like that, really focus on the... So that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool effect. I'm very, very applicable for this, uh, very suitable for this uh, scene, uh, our winter wasteland. Um, if I go back to the uh, stage and atmosphere section here, I'll show you exactly what's uh, what's making up this here. Uh, we don't have any ambient occlusion on right now. Uh, in this scene, ambient occlusion isn't going to really do much. You can see a little bit of detail there on the on the side of the mountains. Uh, we may want to keep that uh, keep that uh, a little bit further down. Um, we don't want too much strength on that. Um, just a little bit of detail is is nice. Always a little, always nice. And of course, decrease that range a little bit as well. And the distance we can bring that bring that down as well. Just a tiny bit of uh, ambient occlusion. Normally, what's uh, normally does your scene good? All right, so we have fog on. That's the first thing that we have uh, set up in this scene. Uh, if I turn the fog off, you can see boom right away. Uh, the effect that that has. This is just a uh, simple fog. This is not a dynamic uh, particle effect fog. So we can turn that on. We can even adjust the color if we want. If we wanted to turn that into like a uh, a red fog for some reason, we could do that. Um, we don't want really want that pink fog. We'll keep it uh, around where it was right there. Got a nice cool cool looking color. And you can adjust uh, how deep the fog is as well. If I select a 10, start at 10, you can see it gets a little bit stronger. But the uh, closer you bring the end of the fog to, um, say, say for example, I bring this to 5,000, you get a much stronger effect. Um, you can see that uh, I can barely see anything until I get really close to it. So that's really useful for certain uh, certain scenes. If I bring it back to 15,000 where it was, we'll uh, get a better result. Maybe even 10,000 um, gets a nice result for this uh, particular scene. You can see uh, where our sign is right there. If I just kind of, where it'll disappear, it'll disappear about there and you can kind of see it off in the distance right there. Uh, when, of course when you render you won't get to all these processing uh, things like that. Um, but uh, of course there we have the uh, fog on. We have the HDR effect as well. Let's bring this back up to 13,000 just in case. And the HDR effect. So the HDR effect on this one isn't, isn't very strong. Uh, if we go back down to the HDR you can see the Bloom scale. If I bring that up and I bring the uh, brightness threshold down, you can see the effect that that has. Uh, not much of an effect because there's actually not very much bright stuff in this scene. Well, the sky is very effective, affected, of course, um, but the brightness threshold really has a significant effect. Let's zoom in and take a look at the uh, sky. Any any bright spot will be really, really um, reflected if you bring that brightness threshold uh, up and the bloom scale down. So you have to find a good balance between those two. Um, I normally like to keep them fairly minimal, at least for scenes like this, unless you're looking for like some sort of heavenly scene or whatnot. Um, let's take a look at what the tone map will do. Well, so I'll select the tone map. You can see that it really darkens up the scene quite a bit. Um, let's turn it off again right here and turn it back on. We can't see much because of the fog, so let's, uh, let's turn that fog off for now. If we turn the tone map on and off, you can see it gets a little bit more contrast in the scene. And you can even uh, increase that if you adjust the uh, Gaussian scale. Um, you can you can increase the brightness of your scene as well. So this is very um, heavy in this scene. If we want to make it make for more more of a lighter scene, we can turn that Gaussian scale down. Uh, but more of the darker scene scene like the blizzard scene, we turn that up. And you can of course adjust the exposure just like you can on your camera and create a darker and lighter image as a result. So we can keep it about here. And you can of course adjust the uh, type of flare. I like to use a spectral cross flare. 
Um, you can increase the scale of that. We'll just bring it back to, to about eight, and that'll affect your uh, your bloom scale. Whoops, brightness threshold right there. So you can get kind of a cool northern lights effect if you do this. Um, you can see in the sky there, we get some nice uh, spectral crosses. If we uh, if we pan around here, you can see those crosses right there. If I adjust the, this to a, a cheap lens, you'll get different a different type of effect. Not as much of a northern light uh, type look. And there's, there's a number of different uh, ones you can use as well. This horizontal flare, um, you can see that one right there. Um, so whatever magical effect you're going for, you can go ahead and use it right there. Um, this one would probably, probably be good for that northern light uh, type look. Um, so that's kind of one scene we can use. We kind of turn it from a, from a creepy uh, dark scene to a more majestic looking scene um, just by using the HDR effects and everything like that. So I have this sign here for scale to see uh, how, show you how exactly how large this is. Um, now we also have image-based lighting on as well. So this has a, spe a specific map. Uh, this uh, scene has a specific map right here. Uh, you can see that if I turn that off, everything gets a lot darker. So this image-based lighting is actually lighting up the scene quite a bit because if we go down here um, to our spotlights, we only have actually one light on it. It's very, it's a very dark light. So this light is, uh, this scene is entirely depending on image-based lighting, pretty much. Um, if I rotate my main light around, you can see it's not having very much of an effect, whether or not it's here or not, uh, whether or not it's um, shining on the scene or not, uh, it doesn't have much of an effect. Uh, a little bit on the shadows, and of course if we go to light, let's uh, go to light and we'll just choose a self-cast shadow instead of the uh, drop shadow. That gives us a bit more details on our shadows here. So there we go, we get some more uh, nice details, and let's make sure we blur that so we don't get those sharp edges there. So that's uh, some pretty cool effects. Let's uh, go down to our sign there, if I can select that. There we go, all right. Back down to our sign here. So you can see the effect it'll have when, it's, when you're close up, um, very bright. Um, depending on where you are in your, in your map, um, and de depending on where your main light is as well, so you can see that uh, if we bring it over here, we get a nice cool effect just like that. So um, this would be a very uh, nice scene for uh, for an Arctic expedition or something like that. Let's uh, close this down right now. Oops, we'll just uh, open this up. Um, let's go back to our uh, atmosphere. And if we choose something like this horror one, this could change it to an entirely different uh, different scene. So if we select horror, you can see, boom, it is now uh, winter at nighttime, which is a very scary uh, scary thing. So you can see that we have a little bit of fog, the image-based lighting. Uh, if we turn the fog on, that's the uh, amount of fog that is normally uh, with this particular uh, template. Let's bring it uh, up a bit here, maybe something like uh, 500 range to uh, 12,000. Let's try that. Oops, 12,000. There we go. Uh, maybe even a bit higher than that, 20,000. All right, so there we go, and you can see that uh, very scary uh, night scene um, all set up right here. If you want to turn on, um, you can see this. There's a kind of a black uh, circle in the distance. Now this is actually our uh, our sky map. So let's go over to set and sky, and you can see it's a black map. It's only set to uh, scale 100 though. If I bring that up to uh, say 1,000, you can see there that we have our uh, our really dark, uh, frightening uh, scene. Everything's black, pitch black, and lots of fog going on. Now to uh, to further emphasize this, if I wanted to have uh, sort of a cartoonish um, you know, kind of scary uh, cartoon scene. I can go down into uh, the stage atmosphere section here and I can also adjust, I can also set the tune shader right here. So you can see the tune shader has a pretty cool effect on this particular map, has some nice uh, edgy shadows. Um, you, can, you can adjust the uh, level of shade that you get uh, with the tune shader there. If you want to make it darker and more mysterious, you can do that. Um, take away most of the light. Uh, I don't really like to keep it ex uh, exactly uh, where, it, where it is normally. Um, of course, you can adjust the edge width, which will only affect the props on the scene. It won't affect your uh, your terrain much. So that's why we have our sign here. You can see the effect that it has on that. You can see it's reflecting again because of that HDR. So we want to maybe bring that scale down. Bring that uh, brightness threshold way down there. There's a more natural look. So you can see if, if, the, if we were uh, having a... There's some sort of Japanese animation scene where there's a... Samurai hiking into the mountains, we can have something like this and uh, at nighttime. So very, very cool effect in, in just a couple of minutes. And you can, of course, uh, uh, refine this and adjust this however you'd like. Um, the edge intensity and the uh, edge width are only going to affect your props, like I mentioned. Um, we don't even have to have edges as well. We can just use the texture color. Um, I like to normally keep the, the edges on a little bit. 
Um, of course, as well, you can adjust um, the contrast in your scene as well for your uh, height map, or sorry, not for your height map, <laughs> for your image-based lighting there. And you can adjust the hue. If you want to have a you know, kind of a more bluish scene, we can just slightly tinge that a little bit and the saturation you can see there. There we go. So we can, we can kind of set the mood uh, with different lighting, different image-based lighting, uh, combining that with a uh, toon shader. Let's zoom out on our scene here. You can see that uh, we get a nice kind of cool effect on the, uh, on the sides of the mountains. You can still also see some of that reflection going on as well. So you can see that uh, there's our pretty cool looking uh, cartoon toon terrain there and the shadows. Or, sorry, the fog still taking effect as well. Let's see that turn that fog off and see what effect that has. You can see there, it's quite nice. All right, so that's just a couple of things that you can do with your uh, with your scene um, in iClone. Um, just a couple of supplemental tips for uh, for making your terrain look its best. Uh, depends on the, of course the kind of effect you're going for. Uh, these are very good templates to start from here along the left hand side. Uh, these all these come default with iClone five. So fool around with those and, and learn about image-based lighting, um, ambient occlusion, and the HDR effect, the various HDR options. And uh, yeah, go ahead and have fun, and you can probably find the exact kind of setting you're looking for for your scene. Uh, so thanks for watching this tutorial, and hopefully you learned something about uh, the new train features in iClone, as well as how to make them look their best.